There's been an outpouring of support in recent days for Everett City Council Gurley Adrian, from outgoing Congressman Joseph Kennedy to Boston City Council President Kim Janey, as Adrian's been under pressure to resign from some of her fellow council members. The problem, according to them, Gurley has been attending council meetings remotely due to the pandemic, while everyone else has been going in person. And a few weeks back, there was an issue with her audio, which resulted in several other members telling her she should show up or resign her post. Turns out the problem was on the city's end, but strangely, video of that exchange was deleted by the next morning. And this is far from the first issue Adrian has had since she was sworn in as the first black woman on the council in January. Council President Rosa de Florio has been quoted as calling Adrian a problem who had been trying to destroy the city and that she has no respect for seniors or white people. Every city, Everett City Councilor Gurley Adrian joins me now. And I should note, we did reach out to President DeFlorio as well and have gotten no response. Councilor, it's good to meet you. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thank you. So the argument of those uh, fellow city councilors of yours is they want you to resign because you, have, uh, you don't come to the meetings in person. You're not buying that. What are the real motivations in your mind? Well, you know, Jim, um, I got elected last November and I was the top vote getter. You know, I beat out two incumbents and I beat somebody who was number one for 10 plus years. So I think there's a lot of upset um, feelings towards that. This newcomer, this young person, um, this black woman coming in and the, the city has changed, right? The, the, the demographics have changed a lot since 20 years ago and they see that their power is lessening. You know, on that list of reasons, the last reason you listed was being a black uh, woman. How important do you think that is in their uh, reluctance to accept you as a full-fledged member of the council? Well, they like to say that I am too aggressive and that my ideas are too aggressive. And those type of um, statements are usually made about black women. And so when I first heard that, or they told me I need to tone it down, um, it brought back, back literally like that is what black women have been told throughout all their life, that we're too aggressive, that we're too mean, that we're too loud, um, and we need to tone it down. And it just goes back to that feeling where, yes, I am a black woman and they're not used to it. I am the first one and they're just not comfortable with it. You know, I should have asked you, by the way, up front, why don't you tell viewers what's the reason why you don't physically go to the city council meetings? Right. So, you know, I work in healthcare. I actually work at a hospital and my hospital actually banned all in-person meetings up until next year. And so when the council president proposed that we meet in person, I asked well, what was the safety plan? Because I knew there wasn't going to be any type of plan. And she told me, well, I'm not going to produce a plan you can attend in via Zoom. Um, I live with my father and my stepmother who are um, above 60. And my father does have diabetes. And due to COVID, mm. especially black and brown communities, we have to be concerned. I've seen a lot of people pass away from it. And so I just want to be safe. And sadly, mm. I knew the counselors weren't going to wear masks. I knew the doors were going to be closed and no windows were going to be open. I, I knew nobody was going to take the safety precautions. You know, at, at reading about you and your uh, efforts, both running and, and serving on the city council, uh, uh, going backwards, this was not the first run in. I know in June uh, you advocated for the formation of a committee on racism. Here's what one of your fellow counselors, Wayne Matuski, had to say at that June 22nd meeting in response. I have never heard of uh, any racist uh, complaints, really. If she knows something that I don't know about people being rude to people in this building or anywhere in the city, I, you know, I, I just don't see it. I'm a Polish American. You know, I'm, I'm really a minority myself here. <laughs> well, he's a minority, too. What's your response to that, uh, Counselor? You know, I, Jim, that night I realized they had no idea what racism was. They had no idea what the definition, what it means, how our people are affected by it, and how the, the impact is. And, and sadly, they still don't know because they still don't want to recognize it and they don't want to have that conversation with me. You live and serve in one of the most diverse cities in Massachusetts. How serious a problem is racism in Everett? You know, Jim, 
I, it's actually brought up to me every single week by my constituents every single week. And I'm trying, I just proposed that the city hall staff employees get diversity and inclusion training because I actually witnessed on my own eyes how an employee uh, degraded a black man who was trying to get service at city hall. So I am, it's, it's something that is very important to me and I'm going to continue to push for it in the city of Everett. You serve on the city council with two other uh, counselors of color, yet from what, at least what we've been able to see, they haven't come to your defense. If I'm right, why is that in your estimation? You know, I like to push on issues that people don't want to talk about. For example, racism. It's an uncomfortable conversation. Um, Police reform. I gladly will talk about that because in times of George Floyd, we need to be having those conversations and they don't want to. When it comes to housing and development and transportation and food insecurity, we need to be having those. And they don't do that. I sadly, um, I'm not afraid to. I knew that I was elected to have these conversations. How hard has this been for you personally? You know, mentally, it's been tough, Jim. Um, I think a few weeks ago, I was debating whether I wanted to do run again, right? Because my term is really? two years. Yeah, it's it's tough. But, you know, a lot of people from Congresswoman Ayanna Presley um, to Joe Kennedy to Kim Janey to Damali Vito, they've all said, you know, you're the first black woman. And my mentor, Lydia Edwards, uh, I just spoke with her this morning. She's like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but you can keep on going because you want others to follow your lead. Well, when you said uh, uh, you started that sentence by saying a couple of weeks ago you were contemplating not running again, have you made a decision about another term? I am. I am going to run. <laughs> I'm going to run again. I'm not going to let them uh, defeat the work that we're doing because it's important work and it's needed work. I should have said, by the way, you were the top vote getter in the most recent at large uh, voting there. Final question. Do you see a time when you can be part of a more collaborative effort with your colleagues or are you just resigned to the fact this is the way it's going to be on the Everett City Council and you're just going to have to deal with it? Honestly, Jim, I don't know. Last council meeting we just had um, a few days ago, I thought I was going to be issued an apology. And instead, they blame the technical issues when four counselors talked about me resigning. Um, they seem to understand that there's no fault on their end and that it's all due to the technology when we know, Jim, it's bigger than the technology. They don't want me on the council. So I'm going to move forward. I'm going to work on the issues that I care about and push forward and hope that my colleagues will join me because we should be talking more about issues that are affecting the families and individuals in Everett. Counselor, I really enjoyed meeting you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Jim. Have a good night. You too.